there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With over 140 channels in your vehicle, your all-access trial includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels and enjoy favorite shows with Sirius XM Video On Demand. What you love is on now. Hey guys, what's going on? Today we are bringing the thunder on the showcase because we've got MTX in the house with some big news and some new product to go over. We've got their sales and marketing director, Rico Felice, as well as their senior sales and marketing engineer, Jason Plank, in the studio with us to go over this brand new product that just came out fresh out of the oven. Don't you dare go away. This is CMA Showcase presented by SiriusXM. MTX Audio, start. What's going on, guys? I'm your host, Ben Wu, and this is CMA Showcase, a special edition show that we do whenever there is, that's right, a new product alert. We're going to put a focus on that because the boys and girls at MTX have come up with something pretty snazzy that we're going to go over today because we are going to be joined by them straight from their Arizona studio. But before that, we're going to bring on their Canadian distributor, our good friend Grant McFadder from Trends Electronics. What's going on, Grant? Hey, Ben. What's going on, brother? Another you day, another like, episode. You look like a DJ, like out of a Beezer or something. This whole setup in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> um, another day, another episode. But this one's a little bit special. You notice the color, right? A little bit different. We're, we have this red highlight. And when we see red, it means there's a new product alert. And we are here to showcase some new product from MTX. Yeah, these guys have uh, been really setting the world on fire a bit with these uh, kits they've been making for Razors and Can MX threes, and the latest, what latest and greatest one today we're going to find out is the uh, the new Razor Pro XP kit, which was uh, we got calls so many calls last year for Pro XP kits. It was like oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But hey, better late than never. It seems like MTX has just been rolling them out one after the next, dropping bombs. Like last year, they did one or two new kits. How's it been for you guys as far as distribution and uh, to your customer base? Uh, the Razor kits did really, really well. Uh, we loaded up pretty heavy on the X3 Maverick kits, and then uh, nobody had any vehicles available last yeah, year. Yeah. So we still have some left over, but uh, they're starting to kick in. And we've already got pre-orders for the, X the Pro XP kit. So as people have seen their... Their social media posts that they've been doing have been working because people have seen it and we've been getting orders. So uh, super excited. And they're, they're shipping very, very soon. Hopefully by the end. Well, hopefully by the end of the month. Well, I know what I like about these guys is that they put a lot of thought and engineering and design behind all their kits. I know we spent some time last time with them when we went over some of the details that really help installers put stuff through. I have no doubt in my mind these whatever kit they come out with is going to have all that and more. Not only do they engineer this stuff, they live, eat, breathe, and you know what, this stuff. Uh, I was. Lucky. Are you speaking from experience? <clears throat> I'm speaking from experience. I was down. Yeah, you know I am. <laughs> I was down there a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I was very lucky to get out with uh, Mr. Plank, Mr. Fickus, and Brad took me out for the morning before I had to get on a plane and fly back. And uh, man, we were down in what superstitious mountains, I think they were, and down in Box Canyon, and. Uh, I almost shit myself doing the uh, the waterfall. <laughs> uh, that's a you can you can YouTube the video for uh, box. You know candy, why they waterfall. put the bass in the There's sound. lots of guys. Yeah, yeah. That, that's there to distract you from your fear. Yeah, all that loud yeah. music. That's what that is. Um, yeah. Listen, no, those guys live it, man. They 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 live on these machines. You know, that's a testament to how dedicated they are to this category. You know, this is part of the power sports sessions. Of course, MTX has to be in there. And, um, you know, not only are we talking about this new kit, we're also going to go through a couple key and clutch products that dealers need to know about um, 
to be prepared for this season. So to start to kick it off, we've got a cool video that kind of highlights what we just talked about, and we'll let the motion in the ocean uh, uh, kind of speak on itself. I don't think I need to really, you know, promo this more than let's just roll the tape. Roll the tape. You'll see what I mean. Uh, that looks like a lot of fun, but uh, here to tell us all about these goodies from MTX and what went into them and what we're uh, what we're expecting this season. Let's go straight to the studios waiting for us in Arizona at MTX headquarters. We've got both Jason Plank and Mr. Rico Feliz joining us. What's going on, guys? What's up, Ben? How's it going? Oh, man. Excited to talk about new product on the showcase. Um, you guys obviously have the goodies right in front of you. We've seen the video, but now we want to hear from the people that came up with this crazy stuff and uh, tell us, you know, teach us what, what this is all about, what the dealers need to know. That's your cue. That's my cue. Uh, yes, the Razer Pro XP that you just saw in the video, um, we have released a kit for it. It's on pre-order right now. It takes after the traditional Razer kit with a 10 inch ported sub. It's a very similar enclosure. Uh, as far as size and volume output. Um, one of the things we did with this is when we purchased our car to develop off of, we made sure it came with the full OEM audio system, which seems silly because we're going to take it out. But what it did was give us a basis uh, to start from, a platform, what we had to do to be better. Um, so we took multiple measurements and multiple um, seating positions and just listening to it playing different kinds of music and went from there to make sure that we could outperform any oem platform well wow. so and you know what that, that's that's consistent with what you've told us in the past jason you know i know you guys literally tear everything apart get in there look at every detail sit in every position just like you mentioned but before we get into this kid i'm going to ask you an overall question when it comes to development you know how do you decide which kit comes out next i just want to kind of get into the minds of how you plan for this stuff well as grant alluded to um we spend a lot of time in the market out riding going to different events um asking our dealers so honestly it's you can you can visually see what cars are selling the most of you go to an event and you'll notice x amount of razors x amount of can ams and then you'll get the questions mm -hmm. so Rico and I travel to a dozen events a year, and we can just listen to the feedback from, from our consumers asking us for certain things. And I can be honest, we already know what vehicle we're doing next. Um, I'm not going to You're not going to tell us today, though, of course. No, Unless I'm not going to tell you right like, now. Unless you feel but, like it. I mean, don't uh, feel like, you know. The wheels are already in motion. Um, okay. And, I, and with Rico also answering most of our social media questions, um, I'm sure you get you get asked a lot that he can bring to the to the table when we have our our meetings on what we're going to do next and all that sort of stuff well you heard from the beginning grant had mentioned that you know the moment the socials kind of started leaking out there he started getting some feedback and inquiry so you know i'm not going to hold this up let's put you up on full screen walk us through this new kit and uh, we also have an image when you need it just let us know let's go for it all right okay oh i'm little I don't want to be little. <laughs> the other no, we're going to get you on the full screen right now. Here we oh, go. There we go. Oh, huh. <laughs> now we got the main stage. Uh -huh. All right. So, you know, as, as Jason started kind of mentioning, the, the subwoofer module itself, um, we have a our high powered 10 inch ported sub enclosure that is designed to mount on the passenger side of the vehicle up underneath the dash. Um, that is coupled with our 600 watt monoblock amplifier that we've included in all of our side-by-side -side audio kits to give it plenty of power and produce 
thundering bass as we always want them to produce. Um, one of the cool features in it is the way it actually mounts into the vehicle. Um, of course, it, we utilize factory mounting points as much as possible. So the installer is not having to modify the vehicle or do a bunch of uh, you know, adjustments or drilling or anything of that nature. So it actually utilizes factory mounting points at the base, but then to mount it at the top, underneath the dash is a primary crossbar. Um, that crossbar is what actually holds the enclosure in place. And Jason, when they were designing the enclosure, came up with a very unique clamping system uh, in that it has integrated bosses in the box here and the clamp itself, as you can see, two holes, it literally just slips over the top and then locks it in place with bolts. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, very simple to install. The nice thing about the Pro XP vehicle is um, it's probably one of the easiest to disassemble of all the vehicles that we built kits for um, when it comes to taking it apart. There's not a ton of the vehicle like others that you have to actually disassemble to put the kit in, even if you're doing a full Thunder 5 kit for rear speakers. Um, very minimal <laughs> disassembly. Um, well, it's, it's unlike the Can-Am. Which is the other end of the spectrum. A lot of the uh, Pro XP is not... To say it in a bad way, but it's snapped together. There's there's not a ton of hardware uh, that you have to remove, so that makes it a bit easier. It's quicker. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So then, coupled with the ten inch sub, of course, you got to have a front end. Um, now, luckily for us, the Pro XP, because it is often offered with the OE audio system, um, they already have provisions for front speaker locations. Um, so we basically just built off of that. So our front speaker pods, which Jason can show you here. Um, utilizes a brand new ground up design six and a half inch component set. So this is a true mid-range separate tweeter system. Uh, the lower pod is rotationally molded, six and a half inch driver, um, obviously has plug and play integrated cabling design as well as an integrated connector to plug the tweeter in. And it actually has RGB integrated lighting built into the bottom of the of the enclosure. So basically it'll give you that nice glow in your footwell that everybody likes. If it glows, it must be good. It must be good. Um, but Rico, did the previous kits also have RGB or is this unique to this kit? Yes. Yeah, all the all the previous kits had RGB, but they were integrated into the speaker itself um, in this particular design because we went with a true mid-range. Obviously there wasn't an area to mount it. So we went with the down lighting. We went with down lighting also because that speaker is hidden behind a grill. Yeah. So by putting this on what is the bottom of this when it's mounted in the vehicle, like Rico alluded to, it lights up the entire floorboard of the vehicle, where if we had put it on the front, it would just kind of glow behind the factory grill, which that's not exciting. Um, one thing we did learn when we were doing this testing and evaluating with the vehicle um, is that the tweeter on the OE system was a little intense. Um, it was it was very, very bright. It was a little overpowering to the mid. Um, I understand why they did it. Uh, obviously, wind noise and that sort of stuff, they want it to cut through. But if you weren't moving and you're just hanging out and just driving at a slow pace, it was pretty darn annoying. Uh, so one thing we did on our tweeters is we actually have selectable um, output levels so that you can plus or minus it 6 dB mm. and fine tune the front end into what you want to listen to, not what they're dictating that you listen to. So that's a nice nice feature on the tweeter. Um, it doesn't require any extra wiring or anything. It's, it's simply a, a, a plug that you would just switch terminals that you want it uh, to adjust it okay, to. Okay, so that's not a, a on the fly selectable type of feature. It has to be predetermined and then powered up and then played. Yeah, but the good thing is, Ben, is these tweeters go in and out in a matter of seconds. Really. Seconds, You just pop them in and out. So you could literally adjust it, sit in the vehicle, go for a ride and say, no, I want more tweeter. I want less tweeter. Pop them back out. There's no tools required to do it. Nice. Um, before we go any further, uh, one uh, question I had for you, Jason. In the previous kit that we covered, um, there was a subwoofer 
or at least a mid base driver in the kind of like the kick panel where you had a special kind of bracket to help the installer slide in. Is that the same type of principle you, you were referring to just now with that subwoofer piece? Yeah, we try to, we try to do the brackets as simple as possible for the uh, installers. Cause the, I mean, the biggest thing is you, uh, again, you don't just like in car audio, you don't want this vehicle, this install clogging up the install bay. You want to get it in and out. So every time we do a kick panel, an amp rack, or a subwoofer, we really take into account uh, the installer side of it. We've got to get this in, we got to get it secure and get it out. So everything we do, we try to minimize the effort that goes into it. We try to use the same tools, the same bolts through all our kits yeah. so that the, the familiarity is there through every one of them. It's going to be the same plugs, same harnesses, uh, as long as the vehicle can uh, adapt to that but but for example on the pro xp god forbid polaris can't keep the same ride command harness through all their vehicles the pro xp has a a, a new one so we had to develop I think it's, yeah, it's down here look at this thing this is the new ride command adapter and then you have a separate one for the subwoofer so these were developed ground up just for this car but the nice thing is again no no splicing. You plug this into the output of the ride command and directly into the four channel amp. Plug this into the subwoofer output of the ride command directly wow. into the stick. So truly plug and play. There is no splicing, no, and no, no outside third party <laughs> adapters required. It's all in the box. It's yep. all, in the, it's all box. in the box. It's it makes it really easy, Ben. All right. Well, I'll let well, you keep going, please. Keep One of the things I think that these guys do that's really cool too is they've got front to back installation videos. Maybe you're going to touch on that later, but uh, hmm. they, they show you before you actually do the vehicle. You know, you can probably save yourself three hours on your first one just by watching the video. And they're pretty good. I did watch the one from the previous. Uh, uh, it's funny. You keep calling them car. I've heard them called bikes, cars. It depends, I guess, where uh, where in North America yeah, you were. You know, from. From. Yeah. Very it's cool. definitely geographical. We were just in uh, Arkansas at a mud event. A mud event, hmm. um, wet mud bogging, um, and they call them bikes. Yeah, Even we call them bikes cool up here too. Call them bikes. Yep. Yep. Same, yeah, same. and then some some places like West Coast will call them buggies. Um, you know, some guys will actually call them side by sides. Ironically, I, I don't know why. And but... then and then uh, yeah, upper Midwest. It's razor is generic for whatever. Yeah, doesn't whatever matter what brand. Oh, ra ra razor's the Kleenex, isn't it? It's you know exactly. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we we covered the the subwoofer um, as well. You talked about the tweeter. Let's keep on going. Yeah. So moving on with the kit. I mean, additionally, of course, we've got amplification. As I mentioned before, the sub is coupled with our six hundred one amplifier, uh, big mono block. Uh, the front and the rear speakers are amplified by our standard 100.4 four-channel amplifier. So you've got up to 400 watts of power there. So all of our kits that we are selling as far as our, our three-speaker or five-speaker kit um, all come with the same amplifier. So all kits are set up for 1,000 watts of RMS power. Um, the three-speaker system, for example, consists of your front and your sub. But if you wanted to, like the rest of our kits, add the rear speakers at a later date, we make it very simple in a plug and play fashion to be able to do that. So for the rear speakers, we're utilizing our MUD 65 PL rear speaker cans. Um, they've got a universal mounting system with multiple clamp sizes. Um, so if you've got an aftermarket cage or a stock cage, let's say you've got an aftermarket cage and maybe it bumps up to a 185 or a two inch tube. The 65 PLs have the clamps that come in the kit that are able to go between all of the different pretty much standard cage sizes. Um, of course, they are plug and play. They do have the integrated RGB lighting built into them. And if you add them to the kit or you get them with the kit, they come with a pre-terminated, pre-wired harness that you simply plug in at the can location, route it through the center console up to the amplifier location, and plug it directly into your speaker harness. Um, the kit itself, all the kits also include our RGB lighting controller. Uh, which plugs into the system that allows you to have thousands of color choices through your lights, uh, both from the front speakers and rear speakers. You can make them blink, you can make them oscillate, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, but all of that is included in the kit. Now, variations of the kit, 
Um, so obviously we're talking about a, a ride command integration, but obviously there are some of the vehicles that are out there that don't come with the ride command installed. So we do have um, the, the versions that also include our AWMC3 source unit. Um, so this source unit comes with the Thunder 3 or a Thunder 5 kit if you've got a vehicle that doesn't have ride command. And then that in turn mounts into the dash panel where typically you would find the ride command system screen. Um, so again, everything is, is included in the kit that you need to basically install it, all the wiring. And again, Jason and the team, they have tried to make this thing as, as simple, installer friendly. Um, it's probably one of the faster kits to install even. Yeah. Uh, even compared to, to the original Razor kit that we installed, so I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you on that on that statement, Rico. It's my job, so you know don't don't hate me for this, but I'm gonna challenge you on that statement. So you're talking about the RGB kits are with that lighting controller is included in the kit. They are included in the kit. And are the wires for the RGB lighting also pre-terminated? Everything is already integrated into the plug and play harnesses. Really? So there's real, not even connectors to do, not even for the lighting side of things. Yeah. yeah. So for example, the, the single six pin connector that's on the rear speakers or the front speakers, all the wiring for the RGB is already integrated into the harness. Oh, it's one heart. I gotcha. It's not separate. Okay. Well, yeah. That's, so there's not separate harnesses for one. There's not a lighting harness and a speaker mm -hmm. harness. They're all mm -hmm. in a single harness. So again, if you can physically put two plugs together, you're hooking up your RGB light. That's about as as the definition of plug and play right there. Okay, what about well, the for the for the um the ones that don't have the ride commands um in, at the central at the helm? Uh you want to use the source unit here. Does it fit right in? Is there an adapter plate? I'll show How does you. that work? Well, he's going to show you just a second. Oh, okay. All right. We have props. Props, props are great. We love props. But you know what I mean, right? Because sometimes the ride command, you need to play it. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. So in vehicles that don't have ride command, so this is, in a sense, the trim panel that would be in the, the dash. Mm -hmm. um, so it's basically a two-piece panel. You've got the piece in the dash that normally would hold the ride panel, it's, uh, the ride command screen itself. Uh, in non-ride command vehicles, they have this covered trim plate. Uh, so this is a solid plate. The what With the kit... Uh, whenever you go to install the AWMC3 radio, basically you disassemble, you drill a three-inch hole through the front of this trim panel, drop the radio in, and then we include the mounting gusset plate and hardware that just ah, basically clamps it all together. That's what I was so wondering. So this literally just snaps back into the dash, and then you've got all the harnesses that you need to connect to our amplifiers um, and then run it through the system. The nice thing about the radio uh, not only is it, of course, AM and FM, Bluetooth, uh, USB input, uh, but you can also connect a Sirius XM uh, receiver to it. So oh, if you want to have SSV 300 ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have satellite radio while you're out riding and because your cell reception may suck and you can't, uh, you know, stream Spotify or Pandora or whatever your streaming service is, you can hook up and have satellite radio wherever you're going. Amazing. Too. Yeah, because a lot of yeah. times you're going into areas that have no service. Now, about the amplifiers, um, are there any particular uh, locations or bracketry to uh, install the amplifiers? Yes, each each vehicle, whether it be the Razor uh, Pro, the Can-Am, each one has a dedicated amp rack. Um, in the Pro XP, it's high up in the center of the dash, underneath the center dash, um, I don't know what you want to call it, glove box or or package tray or whatever, yeah. um, but it's up above the footwell area. We try to keep it as high as we can, um, obviously for, for water or uh, mud or anything like that. But like I said, it's specific to, to each vehicle. Um, there will be similarities. We use the same hardware for every kit so that the installers are familiar with it. They know what tools to use um, and it mounts the same way. So, uh, Again, keeping in line with the whole family thing, um, they'll they'll recognize it once they open that core pack that holds the what's it got the power harness, the power the amp rack, the power harness, basically all the all, all the hardware. integrated primary wiring that they're going to need, all the mounting hardware and everything. So, um, and that even goes to um, the additional kits that we are we've kind of put together 
uh, outside our Thunder 3 and our Thunder 5 kits for guys who are wanting to put a complete system into the vehicle. Um, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this. I mentioned this the other night when we were on the multi, multi-session. The live, yeah. um, but uh, so let's say, for example, a customer comes into the, the store and they have a Pro XP. Let's say they have the front speaker package from the OE system already, and they're not really wanting to necessarily give that up. They're like, eh, it's okay, I like it, but you know, I, I wanna add to what I already have. Do you have hmm. anything? So what we've done is we've actually created two OEM add-on packages uh, that you can actually expand an existing two or even three speaker, let's say, they have the factory sub installed. Um, you can expand on the OE system by adding our components and or amplification um, to get the full five speaker system. Um, the first one of course is a sub expansion. So if they have a two speaker system uh, with the ride command, because typically you know they're all gonna come with ride command if they have the OE audio, then they will get package consists of of course the loaded subwoofer enclosure, uh, the 601 amplifier, our core wiring kit that has the amplifier rack, and of course the sub integration harness. The nice thing about the way that kit is designed, of course, because there is a factory amplifier, the way our rack installs, we've integrated mounting points so you can relocate the factory amplifier to our mounting plate. Mm. And then you'll install our 601 on top of that. So you've accommodated so, yeah. the space for even the factory amp. Yes, uh, when exactly, yours. exactly. So again, we've tried to basically, because you're having to take some components, some mounting components out of the vehicle to make our equipment mm -hmm. fit, the the goal was to be able to make it go back. And obviously you're you're doing a little bit of, a little bit of what I call relocation, but you're not really moving it. You're just basically, you're mounting it on a separate plate. Well, mm -hmm. long story short, they mount the factory amp to a plastic tray. They do. Package tray, whatever you want to call it. We remove that plastic tray, replace it with our amp rack, which is steel, and we remount the factory amp in the exact same location, but to our amp rack. Um, I have no idea why they put that plastic tray in there. It's really a waste of space. Yeah, it's 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 like a it's underneath the center. So like if you if you're in the Pro XP and you've got the center package tray, and you pull that tray out, then there's a secondary tray underneath, which is where it really doesn't do anything, but it's there. Right. So hey, you it, know what the point is? It sounds like you guys have improved that situation, and that's what we want to hear. Right. So that's yeah, great. we've tried. And then um, the second the second kit for the OE add-on is of course rear speakers. So with the rear speaker kit, it includes obviously a set of the 65 PLs, the clamp, the primary harness to feed all the way to the front, um, and then we have an integration harness that plugs into the factory output. Um, so actually, we're utilizing the rear unused portion of your factory amplifier to drive the rear speakers. Okay. So there's no splicing, there's nothing special or that you have to solder wires together or cut factory harnesses to make it work. You don't even need to add an amp. It, yeah, we're, we're deck, using what's factory there. Factory deck power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. It's well, I, Polaris is kind of doing an odd thing where they're kind of forcing a lot of the dealers to buy the XP Pro with the front speakers. It's like, I don't know if it's mandatory or how they're setting all that up, yeah. but to do that, the Ride Command needs an amplifier. It has an outboard OE amplifier. They're only utilizing the front channels. They're not utilizing the rear or the subwoofer. <clears throat> um, and we're just taking advantage of that. We're gonna do that. We'll, we'll, we'll gladly provide components for you to plug into that. Um, so that's what Rico's referring to is that amp's already there. We just make adapters so that you can add our cans and our subwoofer. Um, it's, I don't, I, they, they left money on the table, so to speak, you know? The, yeah, I mean, it, it was it, just cheaper to do one, one skew amp and put them all across instead of having sure, different ones, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So, okay. Uh, is there any other features or parts that we haven't covered yet in this kit, Rico? That's, that's pretty much all the key components of the kit, uh, you know, is it, seems like there's a lot more than there really is. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward, simple system to install. Um, 
again, anybody who's out there that's had an opportunity to watch the install videos, you realize by watching it, especially if you've seen the other vehicle install videos that we've done, um, it's, a, it's an easy car for this. It's an easy car to work on, um, and, and it makes it a simple kit to install. So definitely don't be afraid to give it a try. That's it. I can, uh, I can also tell you just because we consider this kit done doesn't mean we're done. Uh, for example, next Thursday and Friday, Rico and I are going to do a, another XP Pro install, which will probably be our 50th at this point. Um, literally just to continue to learn, get still pictures that we can provide for people, for, for consumers that may have a question. Yep. Um, and we're doing it in-house on our employees' vehicles so that we continually are installing these kits and learning as we go. And that is leading us into the next vehicle. Um, which I, I'm not going to give away yet. Oh, but I thought he was going to say it right there. <laughs> each, time, each time they they get better, they get easier. Um, and to be honest with you, and I'm proud of the team this time, um, R&D and production actually was faster uh, on this car than we could get the paperwork done. We had the product ready to go faster than we could get the paperwork in the system, get the cartons done, and... Uh, we, we hope to improve on that every time. Sounds um, amazing. We're really proud of this kit. If you get a chance, um, this is one to listen to. In my opinion, <clears throat> I've heard a few, this is our best sounding kit. Yeah. And I think that is because we took the time, we tooled the speakers for the vehicle. Um, we weren't, we were able to start from, from zero, uh, where in the, in the other cars, um, we used what we had but this car was designed, other than the subwoofer, was designed ground up for this particular application. I've no. got uh, three comments. The, the first one is I want to give our listeners um, an overview of, of what that kit looks like when you get it to your shop and you un, you know unbox the whole thing. In a way of an image, let's throw up that image just so that you get a feeling uh, of what the entire kit looks like. Okay. So that would be the, the, uh, the uh, Pro XP parts all together in one shot. Let's go ahead. There you go. So there, you, that's the entire kit, right? You got the sub, yeah, the fronts, the rear cans, yeah. the the two subs. Uh, sorry, the two amplifiers, the bracketry, uh, the source unit, and all the cables and and lighting control and in between and the tweeters as well. Okay. Yep. Yeah, now, that's that's the full and that that represents the full non ride command kit. Really, the only variation between it and ride command is you remove the source unit. Mm -hmm. uh, and you add in the integration harnesses. So, I mean, everything else in that picture is included in both versions. So, second, my second question Is there a subwoofer control in your system? Yes. Uh, yep. And yep. How does included. that work? It's your standard uh, EVC knob that you, you can mount anywhere in the vehicle, anywhere that you have easy access to. Uh, it's going to be familiar to everyone because it's it's the same concept that we use in automobiles. Little little uh, potentiometer knob. Okay, very good. And my third and final question: This is both for Grant and you guys. Uh, timelines as far as availability for dealers are interested. Um, providing, I know on our end, providing any additional delays that we don't know about. I believe we are planning around again around. Give me a day or two. Um, around the 15th of April at this point wow, is when we're nice timing. Okay. 15th of so April. So we're, we're, we're within a two week window right now. <laughs> all up to the point. It, it literally is, you know, it's all about transportation and get it to the warehouse right now, but it is, it is on its way and it's, right. it's, it's on, it's on this side of the pond, so to speak. So. Very good. Well, congratulations, guys. I mean, it looks like a really nice kid. You're, I can see, obviously, you guys put a lot of hard work, but also very proud of it. And that, to me, uh, piques my curiosity to see how this actually sounds uh, in, in the real world situation. So um, we got some time left, obviously, that we've uh, saved because we've got a couple other products that we want to go over. Uh, obviously, we've only done half of your table. Uh, Rico, why don't I pass it back to you and let's get into the next uh, type of product we want to discuss. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, one of the er other areas that we're really proud of that's been doing extremely well for us is kind of our side-by-side -side audio solutions, as we like to call them. Um, you know, we talked, I think the last time we did a Power Sports, we talked a little bit about the, our different solutions and so forth. Um, but 
you know, one of the things that when you're a power sports dealer or even if you're a, a audio shop that's looking to do side by sides, um, a lot of times one of the questions is, you know, kind of of the product mix, what should I look at maybe getting into first? You know, what's one of the things that I should always bring in, even if, you know, because obviously kits are specific to the vehicles and you kind of have to look at the market that you're that you're catering to. Um, you know, you may see a lot of razors, you may see a lot of Can-Ams, but you also may see one or a, a multitude of any of the other brands or shape sizes vehicles that are out there. Um, one of the things that we've introduced years ago and have continued uh, to just be a, a home run for us is our soundbar selection. Um, we have actually two variations. We have a six speaker universal soundbar, which fits on honestly just about any vehicle with a roll cage to oh, include Grant's yep, got a so nice shot of that. Let's, let's, uh, one. He's yeah, got let's go to Grant's screen there. there. Um, nice detail. And then, uh, so it's a six speaker sound bar. Uh, we have two versions. We have an aux input or an aux and Bluetooth streaming input. Um, the really nice thing is they also have an auxiliary out so you can expand the sound bars themselves. Uh, the six speaker have three different mounting rails, top, back, and bottom with universal clamping systems. So pretty much anything with an inch and a half or inch and three quarter tubular frame, you can mount these too. Uh, they can go front, overhead, behind, just about anywhere in the vehicle that you might have a spot for. It's basically just pair your phone to it or you plug in your media device, turn it on and, and you're playing sound. Uh, these are great for you know smaller vehicles, uh, but what we find is guys with the bigger SUV, the UTVs, um, you know, like again, the Razors, maybe the Ranger, the General, uh, some of the KM like Defenders and so forth, um, they want more. So that's where we have our big four speaker overhead soundbar. Now, this of course steps up the game. It's higher amplification, almost 300 watts of amplification power. It actually has a full function integrated head unit, so it's AM. FM, Bluetooth, auxiliary, wow. USB. We're gonna make we're gonna make Grant work out a little bit here. Let's yeah, <laughs> take out. That's a big. Get that it. is a big sound bar. Holy! Getting my getting my shoulder workout today. Yeah, let's take a look at Grant's shot there. Look at that. Okay, those are not small speakers in there. No, those are six and a half. Wow. Okay. Four, six and a half. That's like a magnum, magnum size sound bar. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and the cool thing is we've we've built these so there's actually three different widths. Um, so we have a 31, a 41, and a 46 inch wide bar, and the mounting clamps that are integrated into it they can expand in and out as well as rotate, so they will align and clamp onto the cage assembly. Um, we also have accessories such as ProFit clamp adapters. So let's say you've got a Ranger or a General or uh, even like the new Can-Am uh, Defenders and some of the other vehicles that are using a ProFit style cage. Uh, we have clamp adapters that you can swap out the ones that come with it to be able to accurately lock on to that cage assembly. Both of these are, are simple to install, um, simple to wire. There's literally three wires to hook up. You've got your power, your ground, and of course your accessory turn on. Um, as I mentioned, the six speaker sound bar does have an auxiliary out as does the big overhead soundbar. And that's, that's one of the key advantages from a, from a dealer standpoint when he's trying to design a system for a customer is you know, what does the customer want? How expansive do they want? Um, so sometimes they wanna start with a soundbar. Sometimes they want front audio and rear audio. Um, and in those instances, we have tried to make these expandable to easily add rear speakers, subwoofers, other amplification onto them and still be controlled through the primary source unit itself. Mm -hmm. So like the big bars, for example, they do have a remote out to turn on amplifiers. They do have RCA outputs to connect RCAs to so, a secondary so truly, uh, it re really, you don't need to add a source unit if you have one of these already installed. Yeah, it's got a, like I said, it's got a full-fledged source unit built into it. So if you want AM and FM radio and you're in a reception area, you can plug in a standard antenna to it. So it has a standard Motorola style antenna connector on it. So again, we've tried to make it as universal as possible um, and as expansive and, and usable. Well, I, I can give you an example because last week we put quite a few. 
a half a dozen of these in and Rico was selling mm -hmm. them this as an overhead, whether it be the 3141, uh, a 100.2 amplifier and a set of cans. And we were installing them on site at the event. And that was probably the most common setup that we did there. Uh, it's quick, it's relatively inexpensive, um, and it gave them a full sound system, you know, yeah. a acting as the head unit. This is their front speakers. This is their rear speakers. Well, if, if you if you count, Jay, that's one, two, three, four. That's six drivers, what you just explained yeah. right there. Yeah, it gets oh, down. Wow. One of the things with these, uh, compared to some other sound bars in the market, because they are six and a half inch drivers, you actually get some decent mid bass out of these. It's not a, you know, a three inch, yeah. mid, yeah. you know, mid rangey kind of sound. You do get four, six and a half inch drivers. So you are getting yeah. some cone are those, there to uh, some bass. Are, here's a question for Jason. The 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 coaxials that are in this soundbar, are they similar to the ones that you are you're putting into your your kits or as a standalone or are they uh, unique just for the soundbar? No, they're unique just to this soundbar. Okay. Um a lot of it has to do with we don't have a ton of depth in here. Mm. Because trying to keep this narrow so that when you're sitting in the vehicle it's it's not blocking your vision. So this is actually a little thinner profile driver than we use in the cans or the kick panels. Yeah. Um, but and, uh, the best way to look at it is I, I, this is my head unit. You can expand this just like you would in car audio. You can add amps, you can add subwoofers. You can, you can, you can build from that. Um, it makes for a super easy DIY. You know, there's a lot of customers that want they, these, these guys that ride these machines, whether they're bikes, side-by-sides or, or cars, um, will like to tinker with the, their machines themselves. And this is an easy install. Like I said, if you can hook up, if you can find the battery and do power and ground, you're pretty much there. Yeah, and then one of the best features on this thing here is uh, up top, which is a little thing, but it's weird because uh, none of these the machines have light. lights. No, none of them have lights in them. So this is actually a no. dome light with a simple on-off toggle switch on the bottom. Show so, that again. Yeah. Oh, that LED strip right there. <laughs> yeah, so it's a yeah. little uh, dome light switch. Yep. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, we have an image here that best illustrates this installed in a vehicle. Uh, I think that'll totally show what that what you're talking about there, Grant, and why that's important to have a dome light. Let's go ahead and put there you go. So that's that would you say that's a very typical spot where most guys are installing yeah. it? Probably the most common. The most common, yeah, right there. And therefore yeah, the bigger ones are cool because they've got the map pockets and you can throw your cell phone in there. This the 31 doesn't have the map pocket. Uh, there, mm -hmm. that one's got the map pocket, so you can stick your phone or your you know, uh, from that live the other night that we did, one of the comments really um connected with me is that you know these side by sides bikes or, or cars as you call them kind of remind us of the old you know back in the day when things were simple we didn't have to deal with can buses and all this type of technology in the vehicle yeah. it's just straight the hardware we want put it in and make it work you know there's not that much extra if you will uh now mind you the ride command you know adds a little element to it but you guys already provided the the solution for that but you know what i mean like just that feeling yeah, of going no. in there and wiring it up and making it Boom, you know what I mean? No, it's a, it's a, uh, especially for an old installer like myself, it's like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's more, it's fun working on these. It reminds me of the, the, the good old days, so to speak. Today's cars, when you like got no a signal black, summing, you don't have to summon any signals in these. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, none of that, none of that. Just none you know, of that. Uh, yeah. That luckily there's no data bus or anything that you have that's to worry what I mean. about. Okay. Right. Oh, I tapped into the wrong wire. Now my blinkers don't work, type of thing. You know, it's like you're, what you're, you're dealing with 24 volt outputs and just all kinds exactly. of weird, you know, yeah, absolutely. yeah, exactly. So, one thing okay. I can tell you though, you can get ground loop noise on these machines. We, <laughs> I would imagine, have, you know, yeah, when it's a tubular welded together chassis, you can imagine how much you know base resistance there is through that thing. Yeah, so. at some mm -hmm. of our events, we do a little uh, <laughs> we we'll call it tweak and tune. Because people, you know, we're an audio company and people are coming to us. They they just think audio, electric, same thing. They'll come over and say, my LEDs don't work. And right, we're right, going, right, right. we don't even sell light bars, but no. we look at it and you should see some of the some of the things we get ourselves into. Yeah. <laughs> I, I bet. I bet. Okay. You know. um, so we talked about the new kit for, uh, for Pro XP. We talked about yeah. these really cool sound bars. Um, what about for the guys that, you know, let, how, how did I say this? There are a ton of bikes out there that don't fall into these, uh, you know, application specific kit categories. What about these guys? Because there's a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, it, it goes back to what I said earlier about us trying to provide 
audio solutions to our dealers that they can then provide the customers. And that's where um, we came out with an updated version. We, we had some universal audio kits previously, uh, but this last fall, we greatly expanded the, the offering um, to what we call our uni kits or universal audio. Um, so the universal audio kits, the cool thing about it is they all have kind of a core package that they consist of. Um, they all consist of a pair of our 65 PL speakers, or we also have versions that come with two pairs. Uh, they have our MUD 100.2 two-channel amplifier, uh, integrated uh, speaker, or they come with a roll of speaker wire, the power kit to hook up the amplifier, and the most important thing is when you're ordering one of our universal audio kits, you're picking the source or the type of integration connection that you want. Um, so we actually have six variations of the kits. We have three that come with a source unit of some type. Um, so they start with our MUD BTRC, which is a Bluetooth hockey puck style receiver. Uh, the next one is our uh, BT, um, I'm blanking. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's basically a Bluetooth switch. Uh, the cool thing about the Bluetooth switch is this has Bluetooth and auxiliary input capability. Grant's got one up there. Um, and it mounts in a standard switch knockout location in your dash. Uh, connects with three and a half inch millimeter input aux and output for connecting to amplifiers and hooks up simple power ground and accessories. So it's pretty straightforward. And then the third kit we offer is one that comes with our AWMC3 full function media receiver. So depending on the vehicle that you've got, what kind of source you want to use, what kind of media connections that you want to be able to make, and really mounting where you've got space to mount it, we have a, a integrated media source of some type available to you. Now, on the flip side, the other three, which we call kind of our integration kits, um, we have one that is an auxiliary connectivity, meaning it has a three and a half millimeter to RCA connector. So let's say you're somebody who likes to plug your phone in or you like to plug an iPod or something of that nature, um, you wanna be able to hardwire. So you just simply have a three and a half millimeter, you plug into your media device and you play directly through the amplifier out to the speakers. Then we also have one that comes with RCAs. Now, the nice thing about that one is that's the kit that you would buy to expand one of our sound bars. Or you may get the aux kit if you get one of our six speaker sound bars. So again, as I said, these are expandable. That's why we have these, the Unikits. Um, and then the last integration piece is actually one that integrates into Ride Command. So if you have a Razor or a Ranger or a General um, that is not utilizing, of course, the new connector, uh, we do have the kit that comes with the Ride Command adapter, as Grant's showing you now. So you simply plug that into the Ride Command output, run the RCAs into the amplifier, and now you can utilize the audio function of the Ride Command, where you may not have had speakers before, now you do. Um, these are really right. critical you use these things in Ride Command, because Ride Command, for whatever reason, has got some nasty crack wallop smacks when you don't use one of these things. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't design that with audio in mind. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, it's, you, you think about it, it's, it's, like Jason said, this industry, this world that we're in right now really harkens back to the 80s and early 90s of car audio. You know, a lot of times as a car audio installer, it, we always bitch about where the speaker locations are and we have to like, really lay out it. And obviously that's where DSP started coming in. Um, because they didn't design the car with audio in mind. They designed the car to be a car, and then they threw in audio as an afterthought. Well, again, it's kind of the same thing we're dealing the with same there. Situation, uh, same situation. Uh, yeah. I do want to throw up this image that we have of these universal kits so guys, people can kind of get an overview. Let's go ahead and throw that up. Um, and while, while on that, I mean, there, there you go. Rico just walked us through every single one of these. Um, but, yeah, lots of different options. So, like he says right here, play it your way. I think that's a really good uh, term for it. Very, very yeah, cool. yeah, absolutely. So as you can clearly see, all the different audio sources as well as the integration options. And 
you know, the nice thing is if you want two speakers, you want four speakers, um, you know, you can also add on our, our uh, RGB controller as an option. Um, you can add in a subwoofer if you've got one for the vehicle. Uh, you know, it, it's expandable uh, pretty much any way you want it. But we've tried to we've tried to put these packages together to give our dealers uh, and more importantly our customers a, a an easy go to solution that they're not having to figure out. Okay, well I have brand X sound bar. Well, can I hook up brand Y amplifier and how do I put the two together? And well, I want to put speakers in the back. Well, which how do I do that? Mm -hmm, so we've mm -hmm. tried to put as much of this together and make it as simple as possible for dealer and in, end user to be able to figure it out, buy it, and install it. Yeah. I mean, it's a fun category. It's kind of like you said, it brings us back to the old school a little bit. We don't have to deal with DSP or sound damping or, you know, ridiculous stuff that we just mentioned. So let's, it's fun. That's the best part. And when you're coming out with kits like this, uh, make it, it's great for dealers and, you know, for customers that want that refined finished product, uh, that bolts in, that doesn't make holes, that doesn't splice wires. This is a really nice solution. Grant, I'd like to hear what you think of what we just learned today. Um, I'm stoked <laughs> for the Pro XB kit. Um, the, the thing I, I like about this category is these the customers that have these machines, these are not cheap toys. These are forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 Canadian machines. So um, what we've seen, at least anyway, in our market is – Sometimes they'll start here with the audio, with whether it's a kit or a soundbar or whatever. But they're towing these machines with something bigger than that. They're they're pulling it with a Dodge Ram or a Chevy pickup or uh, you know whatever. And then they realize that their factory system in there sucks after they've got something like this in their vehicles. So it for a retailer, it gives them an opportunity to hey, yeah, okay, we're gonna we're gonna start off with your side by side. But ultimately, we're going to get into your, your F-150 or your, your Dodge Ram later and soup that thing up, too. So it, it adds to more. I think the more the audio bug we get, um, the more we want to put it in more, more, more of our toys, right? So whether it's at home, whether it's in our backyards, our, our side-by-sides, or our uh, trucks, you know, it's, it, audio is something that appeals to everybody. Um, and I think this sometimes is the gateway drug into getting into other, other vehicles. And how convenient that... MTS also makes stuff for the truck. Imagine that. Just convenient. Yeah. Just convenient. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, guys, Jason, uh, Rico, I want to thank you today for taking the time and setting this all up for us and, and walking us through. Um, congratulations to the engineering and R&D team for putting it out. It looks like you guys are kind of getting into a flow now, right? You've got like some, some stuff worked like. out. Yep, some stuff worked out from the pr production and pre-prod side that is streamlining that process. And it doesn't look like this category is slowing down. So we're excited no. to see uh, whatever comes from this. No, no, not at all. No, we're ready to start the next one. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got quite a few things kind of in the pipeline right now. Uh, obviously, Jason saluted that we're starting to look at the next kit. Uh, I know we've got some other pieces uh, that are in development right now that will complement or enhance uh, our lineup additionally. So... Uh, We'll definitely have some uh, more things coming down the line that that we're going to want to talk about. Yeah, all right. They're very similar to these, but I can not. imagine. <laughs> Mr. Play, Mr. Felice, this, but not this. <laughs> we'll let people okay. decipher that as they will. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you on the next one. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. For us. Take care. Thanks, boys. Mr. McFadder, nice line. Great guys, so good R and D going into some really cool product. I know you're excited about this new kit because it's exciting. You know, when you have dealers that are, are heavy with this stuff and have those customers um, knocking on the door, and you can actually provide them with something like this. I mean, you're making everybody happy. I think one of the things that uh, when I was out with the boys down in Arizona, my takeaway from that that uh, couple of hours out in the desert with them was the opportunity for this category is massive. Massive. I mean, we were there for three hours. I must have seen over 200 machines. Uh, you know, well, this is random. This forth. wasn't an event, right? Just no, this was not an event. This is just, it was a Thursday afternoon, man. Thursday morning, right? So, 10, we, we got down there at 10 in the morning. I had a flight at two. So, I went down there till one o'clock and then we jetted to the airport. But 
the amount of machines that came by us that had no audio on them. Uh, the right. opportunity is massive. It wasn't like the market is saturated. The market is untapped. I, I, I think here in Canada, to... it's like <clears throat> even more untapped than that. Like, because the sales of these things are definitely going. I live in, you, everybody knows I live in somewhat of a more rural uh, area, but like even in BC, there's so much rural, right? And country. Um, these machines are flying out the door. Just ask the dealers. Yeah. As far as the those that sell, you know, these type of machines. Um, but how much of them have actually now, you know, gotten that audio bug, that sound bug that you're talking about? I think it's just, it's waiting to be tapped into. And I think for dealers that sell the actual machines themselves, this is a no-brainer for them to sell it. Because mm. there, there, there has been a shortage of vehicles the last two years. Uh, I don't think this year is going to be much better. So what better way to add on to the, the profitability of every single machine is adding audio to it. You've got the captive audience right there. He's handing you over his check for 40 grand or 50 grand. Uh, make it 44 or five and ka-ching, ka-ching, you know? Ka-ching, ka-ching. Well, guys, if you're if you're interested in this MTX gear, which I know you are, make sure you get a hold of Grant and his team over at Trends Electronics. They're the Canadian distributor for MTX in Canada. And of course, for those listening abroad or in the US, get a hold of your closest MTX rep. I'm sure they can hook you up. Grant, thanks so much for uh, being on, on this one. Really fun a stuff. pleasure once and, again. Uh, Circle back with us once you actually see one of these installed locally. Uh, we did one locally. I got to get pictures of it. We just, uh, the, the MTX guys were nice. They sent us up a kit. They didn't have all the nice fancy packaging, but we already did one. It's cool. So Sweet. we'll get, get that to you. All right, man. Take care. Thanks, brother. See you. All right. So I want to remind everybody to continue tuning in right here to CMA Networks because until Tuesday, April 19th, we are continuing with the Power Sports session. Some great brands presenting right through till Tuesday, April 19th, specifically in the Power Sports Audio category. Make sure you visit our redesigned website, cmanetworks.com. We've got literally hundreds of videos for you to choose from. Brand new search options in there, including by brand, by category, and yes, even by trainer. Check it out, cmanetworks.com. Um, all new redesign. Hope you guys like it. So that's it. Thanks for tuning in to another, well, actually not another. This is actually our first CMA showcase where we bring you the latest and the greatest goods. Um, of course, presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. Stop it. Yeah, I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's left What? <laughs> Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What?